Hey, what's up guys? Justin from California Grenadiers again here. Showing you guys a little something I've been working on. So, pulled this out of the car. If you know what this is, this is a standard stock CV drive shaft. This is out of the Grenadier. And this is one of the weakest points on any off-road vehicle, um, especially solid axle vehicles, once you start lifting them and putting bigger tires, um, kind of becomes a point of breakage, especially with the extreme angles. So these CVs are great. They kind of have like ball bearings inside this boot. And uh, this is the transfer case side. And this is the axle side. So it's a great thing for, you know, stock applications, uh, passenger cars, things like that. Um, but as soon as you start lifting the car, that angle goes extreme. And that boot can rip or tear on the edges here, or if it hits something when you're off-road because it's just rubber um, if it tears and dirt gets in there and it gets gunked up it'll eventually wear out um, and it's actually quicker than you would think and it'll spew the bearings everywhere and if you're driving that drive shaft will flail around um, potentially causing further damage um, and that can happen on both sides but on the grenadier because it's a high pinion, um, the way the pinion angle is, it's at the top of the axle of the diff, so the angle applied is extreme. So once we lifted the car two and a half inches in the front, I think it was sitting maybe, maybe like that. Well, it would be like that. Um, but then once we lifted it, it was like almost maxed out. And that's where guys are running into problems with their caster settings, blowing these CV shafts out already. This is an incredibly common problem amongst Jeeps and uh, older Land Rovers that had, uh, you know, high lifts, short trend, uh, short drive shafts. Um, you can see that it would tweak both of these kind of pretty far. That'll blow up. And then these shafts right here are pretty narrow. This isn't terrible. I don't know what the the uh, uh, thickness of the wall on that is. Um, it does have a slip yoke. Um, and I think it has a plunger mechanism also that helps to push it back because it needs, this CV needs to like sit in there. If that gets moved back and forth this way, then that could damage that as well, and then it'll spit those out. And you can see the balance weights and everything here. here. So I knew that this was gonna be a, a failure point eventually. So I've been working with a partner to get a double carden shaft built. And some of you guys might know that, that have reached out to me personally, because I've addressed it a couple times on Facebook. Um, but as you know, the Enios demographic, it's kind of full of a lot of, uh, folks that, um, I think maybe think they know better. Um, but this is coming from wor real world experience. I've blown three drive shafts, personal drive shafts in my Jeep, um, from some pretty severe rock crawling. Um, two of them were... So one was a front drive shaft that was like this. Um, car was lifted on 37s, um, stock uh, axle, uh, stock Dana 44 in the front. That blew up on the trail uh, just from, you know, using it for about a year, I think, when it was lifted. Um, it blew at the boot. Um, but luckily we were going slow enough and I was trying to climb some pretty uh, uh, large rocks and uh, terrain. Um, and it was kind of hung up, and that's where it grabbed, and the torque from the tires kind of just twisted it, and it just blew up at the joint. Um, the other time was out at Cougar Buttes. Oh, that time was on John Bull. Um, the other time was out at Cougar Buttes, <clears throat> and uh, 
and that was the rear drive shaft that was factory um, on 37s. Um, and that just twisted. That just twisted off. Um, oh, wait, no, that was the Rubicon. That was on the Rubicon. Yeah, that was on the Rubicon with 38 inch tires. The other front drive shaft was a 1310 drive shaft that I had built double card in. Um, that was in Cougar Buttes. And that one um, snapped, uh, I think it snapped like right here. Um, this isn't a double card in, but um, whenever they connect right there, um, the tube gets thinner when it connects to the like the different yokes and CVs and things. Um, it snapped right there because it was too short, the slip yoke, and it was just, and it snapped. Um, and it was too small because the rig was already on 40s, 1 tons, the drive shaft wasn't um, exactly ideal for that setup. Um, in the Grenadier, um, interesting, um, we had the double carton made, so it had a double carton on this side, the transfer case side, and usually you can get away with a single U-joint uh, on this side because um, the angles usually aren't that bad. But with a Grenadier, the the high pinion's up here on top of the pumpkin, and it's kind of tilted down that way a little bit, because when you set your caster, you need to tilt it that way to get some better, um, you know, tracking on road. Um, if, it, if it's set like that, your pinion angle's going to be bad, and it's going to be floating all over the road. Um, feel kind of darty. Um, so that's a problem there on that end. And then on this end, the transfer case is tilted up like this way. So it's coming out at an angle that way. And this angle is like that. So you can imagine it's pretty tweaked. Like this one's going like this. And this one is going like that. So it gets pretty tweaked. Um, unfortunately, with just the one double card in right here, because of those angles on the drive, uh, the transfer case, there were a lot of vibes and like kind of like some binding. Um, so we had to go back to the drawing board and we made a double CV. So essentially multiple double card in shaft. So a double card in on this end and a double card in on this end. And it has a slip yoke. And, uh, you know, I'm going to drive it out to um, Overland Expo uh, in Colorado, Overland Expo Mountain West. Um, if you guys want to see it, um, that's kind of where we're going to reveal that thing. Um, but as a teaser, um, it's made with 1350 U-joints. So it's 1350 size to kind of match the almost one ton size of these uh, axles in these vehicles. So... Um, We'll show it over at the expo. Um, I'll also take a video and get that uh, shown to you guys. Um, it's in the car, but I uh, kind of wanted to tease this out for you guys. I've been talking about this for a couple of months. I've been thinking about it since I bought the car and knew I was going to lift it. Knew there were going to be caster problems, pinion angle problems. I knew there was going to be some weakness here once going to bigger tires. Um, if you're getting into any kinds of uh, rocks or ruts or things where you might get bound up and um, lose traction and then suddenly gain traction under a lot of torque, this thing isn't going to last the longest, especially once you go to bigger tires like 34s, 35s, 33s. This is probably going to be okay if you're not lifting it too high. If you're maybe doing the Euro spec 1.7 inch lift, um, that's probably going to be okay. It's not going to twist the angle that much um but once you go two and a half three inch this, this thing's toast if you go to three inch somebody's gonna come out with a three and a half inch lift soon um this thing's not even gonna it's not gonna last it's not even gonna tolerate that angle it'll be fully maxed out and that will be with terrible caster settings so um that's why i kind of uh was in a rush to get this done because i like to do a little more rock crawling than i do just uh you know driving through the desert or, you know, sightseeing, I guess. I like to kind of uh, push the vehicle a little bit more, um, get to some more remote places than most can get to. Uh, so that's why we did that. Um, but yeah, um, if you guys have any questions or comments, please leave them in the uh, 
in the comments section. I'll be more than glad to answer your questions, or if you guys have any ideas, let me know. Um, also, please follow us on Instagram, uh, same as the YouTube channel, Bodie Grenadier. Um, and look for some more updates from Overland Expo Mountain West. Thanks for watching, guys.